up you guys welcome back to the channel thank you for pushing that play button thank you for joining me today if this is your first time stopping by seriously please do me a favor and push that subscribe button right now if you are really new to this channel and you're watching this definitely wherever you're on your mobile device your tv your your desktop definitely push that subscribe button right now because we would love to have you part of this community i love with the c7 corvette content and the c8 mid engine corvette content before we get into this video today i want to give a shout out to studio seven he reached out to me and a couple other people as well saying oh, your videos is getting us through this i want to greatly appreciate it i enjoy watching your uploads so you know release as many uploads as you possibly can because literally this is helping me get through this whole situation with the virus and things like that he ain't, he's not for sure if his mom and dad is completely, you know, fully sick with the coronavirus, what the case may be, but he said they were sick and he's trying to get through that process. So, you know, for anyone who's sick right now or have a family member that's sick, I do wish them speedy recovery and I hope that you guys can you know, make it through and all that stuff as well. And once again, thank you for supporting me on this channel. I greatly appreciate it. I um, also want to give a shout out to Steven and Darren. They also purchased some merch off my website. Those guys went to my website and uh, purchased, you know, my Seek on the Speed 252 key tags, which I greatly appreciated you guys, all the support, all the love. Steven, your key tag yesterday, Darren, I made up your key tag last week. You should receive those in the mail, depending on how, you know, the virus and all that stuff would affect the delivery of that. I'm not completely sure, but I hope you receive those pretty soon. And once again, thank you guys. Thank each and every one of you for joining me on my channel and supporting me throughout the years. With that being said, a lot of you have been asking me why I decided to go with the C8 miniature Corvette as a museum delivery and not the C7. Well, I'm going to give you the background story between both of these cars regarding non museum delivery, museum delivery, and which experience was the best one for me and why I decided to go those routes. So let's go ahead and hop into that. Before I get into that though, I would like to get a cold start on the C8 Corvette, especially since it's been a couple of days since I heard it and I want to hear it. What about you guys? Man, I love those lights. Those lights to me is freaking amazing. It looks so good in person. I can tell you right now, if you haven't seen these lights in person, definitely go check them out. Oh my gosh. Look at them. They look so mean to me. They look so mean. Gosh, man. Awesome job, Chevrolet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one off. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and get the C7 code start going. We haven't heard a C7 code start in a long time. Let me pull those keys out really quickly as well. So we might can hear those run at the same time. Here you go, C7 key. Uh oh. Oh, God, that sounded so loud. Man. Gracious. Woo! Man, it sounded so loud. Man, oh man, the exhaust sounds really good, but let's go ahead and turn these bad boys off and get into the video. So, I mean, that exhaust sounds really good on this car. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. Which is a Corsa exhaust, steel factory. I'm not one of those YouTubers who uh, who have the huge connections right now to go out and build my own exhaust, cut some stuff off, add some stuff back. Nah, I don't have time for that just yet. I'm gonna get a long story about uh, my exhaust, probably is someone in this video. So, no museum delivery, museum delivery, why did I decide to go with that one over this one as far as museum delivery? So let me give you the story on this one first. This is the most exciting story there is out of this one. So when I decided to go with the museum delivery with the C8 Corvette, right? I decided to go a step and above because I never actually experienced museum delivery at all. Like I said, I didn't do it on this car. So um, I contacted museum delivery and said, hey, I'm considering getting my car delivered to you guys. They reached back out at me and said, talk to your dealership first. We don't think that's something you're going to be able to do for a number of reasons. Because one, at that time, they was not installing their high wing spoiler at the museum. And there was something else I was considering doing. Uh, maybe I was considering changing out these wheels, which they also did not do at the museum delivery. 
So I contacted my dealership and he agreed. He says, yes, unfortunately you will not be able to do museum delivery because they cannot install the big wing and they cannot do your will. So you have to bring it to the dealership here. We'll do those things for you and you can go about your way. But maybe a couple of weeks later, someone decided to say, hey, I think you guys should figure out how to do museum delivery because you guys are gonna lose a lot of money if you do not decide to do the museum delivery offering these necessities, you know, these needs for these cars. So I decided to make some more phone calls. So with a couple of friends of mine who were also getting C8 Corvettes and they want to do museum delivery. And they said, hey, can you make some connections? Can you make some pulls? Can you call some people? And you know, Jeremy spoke to some people as well. And we somehow end up getting the National Corvette Museum to actually decide to do museum delivery based off you know the wheels and the highway and spoiler and things like that. So <clears throat> when I decided to go about that process of getting that done, they told me the museum delivery costs $995. I didn't think this all the way through, you guys. Obviously, I bought a C8 mid engine Corvette. I didn't know it was gonna cost that much. So I actually still had to go out and work super hard and raise that money to actually decide to do Corvette museum delivery. Now, there's a number of reasons why I decided to do the Corvette museum delivery. It wasn't just for an experience for myself. I wanted to be a YouTuber to actually create experience for everyone else but also help the National Corvette Museum. You know, a lot of YouTubers were all worried about who's getting the car first, who's getting this color first, who's getting these wheels first, who's getting this supercharger first, who's getting this twin turbos first, who's getting these wheels first, who's getting these exhausts first. That wasn't me, you guys. That wasn't me at all. All about being able to share your experience, share your, your love for the cars and passion like that with everyone else. I don't have the passion to actually share my experience with someone else as far as like who got the first exhaust who got the first twin turbo like that's that's not what it's about it's about sharing your experience with other people so what i decided to do was i decided to take the museum tour with this car and i didn't do it with this car and um what i decided to do was help out the national corvette museum and people was like well how did you actually help out the national corvette museum by going to national corvette museum rap well being one of the first YouTubers to do it, which helped. And a lot of YouTubers didn't think about it. A lot of YouTubers, once again, was all oh, like, let me get my car first. Let me be the first one on YouTube to get my car. Let me do this first and blah, 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 blah. I want an extra route. To me, the National Corvette Museum is one of the best things that you can experience. Even, you, even if you're not getting a car delivered there, you should definitely go there and check them out because those guys are very, very helpful. Um, and they're very awesome people and they could teach you a lot of things about the history behind the Corvette. I mean, there was so much about the Corvette that I did not even know until I got to the National Corvette Museum. And I got some of that footage as well, um, walking around the National Corvette Museum that I'm gonna show with you guys, or show with you guys later on in another video. Uh, but with that being said, I can tell you right now, that was one of the best experience I have had in a long time regarding the Corvette. So this is what I decided to do. I decided to be one of those YouTubers to share that experience with you all, but also help out the National Corvette Museum, because now you guys, who are also considering doing the National Corvette Museum, will actually probably get your car delivered there. And now you know that you can get the big wing and the wheels and everything installed there as well. It was absolutely so much fun. As you all know, one of my buddies you know, came with me as well, which is Brink of Speed, and, uh, and we experienced that experience together. Now, one of those things where the National Corvette Museum is a nonprofit organization. Please excuse this junk down here. Um, the National Corvette Museum is a nonprofit organization, and that's why I thought that pretty much going to um, help them in the long run as far as releasing, you know, a video, getting my car delivered there. I know a lot of you have never seen a car get delivered. Is please excuse all this pollen. A lot of you have never seen a car get delivered from the National Corvette Museum. So it was like, why not, Clarence, get this experience for yourself? For your followers and at the same time help out a company that you're already supporting which is the corvette brand in general once again i wasn't one of those youtubers who was like oh man let me be the first one to get my car let me be the first one to do this no let me be the first one to actually help out a company who really deserves it that attention that that um that audience and that crowd and it was just an awesome feeling to be able to help the national corvette museum especially picking up my car from National Corvette Museum. I made a ton of friends along the way. The guys like broke down how this car works, my neighbors, and uh, they broke down how this car works and, and things like that. And I can tell you right now, Chris at the National Corvette Museum 
You guys, go and watch that video. He literally tells you any and everything you need to know about the C8 Corvette. I mean, that video got over 100,000 views, you guys. Literally over 100,000 views, and that video deserved it because Chris did a phenomenal job breaking down the C8 mid engine Corvette just within an hour time frame. Now, when you go to most dealerships, now I'm not knocking the dealerships, I'm not going to give them any flock, what the case may be, but from my experience, most dealerships do not, I mean, absolutely do not go over the car like they should when you buy a new car. They pretty much get you in the car, tell you what it's going to cost, collect your money, give you the keys, show you how to turn it on tell you what your car is about, and see you on your way. Chris literally got on his hands and knees, showed me from driver's side to the passenger side, from the front from the front to the trunk, all I need to know about this C8 Corvette. Every bit of knowledge that he taught me, I use every single day thus far. Now, there were some things that I haven't used on the infotainment system yet that I'm going to save for a later video. But Chris literally broke down every single thing that you guys need to know. So if any of you all are buying a Corvette, a C8 Corvette, and you need to know anything about this car, go check out my delivery process from the National Corvette Museum. I can tell you right now, it's going to teach you a lot of things you didn't know about the C8 Min Engine Corvette. And I'm going to teach you a lot of things about the C8 Min Engine Corvette as well along the process. If you're one of those guys who's looking to twin turbo your car and things like that, I can tell you right now, that stuff sounds fun, but you will enjoy your car from the factory just the way it is. I mean, right now, this car comes with 495 horsepower. Now, I still haven't gotten to the break-in period yet, which is still 500 miles. I think I'm at 401 miles right now, so I'm right at the cusp of being 500 miles so where I can use all that horsepower and give you guys the great comparison between the C7 Corvette and the C8 Corvette. Now, I will admit, driving this car thus far, without um without you know driving my c7 lately this has been a phenomenal car to drive now i will admit i want to wait until i get some new tires put on this bad boy because i haven't bought any tires yet because i wanted to secure this car before i bought tires for this car because tires for this car is not cheap people are oh you bought a corvette yes i did buy a corvette but the tires for this car is not cheap they're about 1500 bucks so that being said with all this going on right now though i still have to wait on um, ordering tires and stuff because I don't know which mechanics, which you know, discount tire, you know, Chevrolet, all those guys, if they're open or not in this area. But as of right now, if I had to compare these two cars beside each other, as far as the driving experience goes, one thing I can point out to you guys is that the C8 Corvette magnetic ride control suspension rides a little bit better than this one. But once again, this one's on factory wheels, factory tires. This is aftermarket wheels factory tires. Now I do plan at some point to put the factory wheels and tires back on this car so I can probably compare the two as far as magnetic ride control goes. So don't get me wrong, the C7 is still a fabulous looking car. Absolutely hands down, phenomenal car to drive. But I love the C8 a lot, a lot, a lot you guys. And I can tell you right now, I can't wait to get in this bad boy and drive it some more. Back to the museum Corvette experience. The Corvette Museum is one of those places where like, if you have never gone there, you should go there for a number of reasons. You're gonna get a great experience, great staff, great team, great people. You literally, if you love Corvette, you'll feel like you're at home all day long. I mean, it's not one of those places where like, if you don't own a Corvette, they, you know, they would, you know, like, no, don't come in here, blah, 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 blah. No, even if you don't own a Corvette, they treat you the same as if you own one. And the great thing about the National Corvette Museum is just the experience, the experience, the people, the culture, the knowledge, the history. I mean, these guys walk around. I feel like they, they're like Corvette but robots. Literally, you'd be like, what year was a Corvette made? They'll tell you. What color Corvette will this guy own? They can tell you. Where this Corvette came from? They can tell you. Like, they can tell you everything you need to know about the Corvette, up and from the C1 all the way to the C8. And that's what I like about those guys, because it showed me a lot of love. They took care of me, they was respectful, they was nice, they was kind, the food was good, and they were just helpful at the end of the day. And you can even ask my friend uh, Mike, he had a great experience there as well. So for all the people that's considered a National Corvette Museum, and you're thinking about it, you know, I would say do it. If it's one of those things where you can afford to spend $985 to have that experience, you should totally do it. To get your car on Boulevard, uh, Corvette Boulevard, watch it on the webcam, which a lot of you guys said that you actually end up watching me uh, take delivery of my car on the webcam. And I was trying to shake a little bit. I was trying to do a little bit of this, make sure like you guys were paying attention. You guys were. I saw a lot of you reached out and was like, hey, Clarence, 
I saw Mike trying to take a picture of you doing jumping jacks. We saw you in the webcam, buddy. So a lot of you guys said that before I even released my video. So once again, kudos to you guys for actually supporting me and watching my YouTube channel. I greatly appreciate it. So like, it's one of those things where like, man, you guys have been phenomenal regarding you know this channel and and you know a lot of you have been sending me lots of emails and wanting comparison videos and things like that. And I totally would like to do those things for you for sure. Um, and you know that's the reason I'm making this video today for a lot of you guys who are considering doing the National Corvette Museum. Now, I'm going to go ahead and lift this up as well. Oh, it keep closing for some reason. I have no idea why that's the case. What's going on, brother? That was good talking with you yesterday. Yeah, it was you too. Yeah. <laughs> right? Right, right, right. Yeah, that's true. Hey, we're still in essential business. Yeah, yeah. So we'll yes, sir. That's one of my neighbors, you guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, this doesn't have a man in job. This is the trunk, <laughs> the C7 trunk. And then you got the C8 frunk and then the C8 trunk along with the main engine in the back. Uh, but like I said before, I did museum delivery with this car. I didn't do museum delivery with this car. And I'm going to give you a kind of quick kind of explanation why I did not do museum delivery with this car. Honestly, I didn't even know that was a thing. When I bought the C7 Corvette, I did not know that getting museum delivery was a thing. But at that time, I wasn't even thinking about the whole museum delivery process. I was literally just thinking about buying a Corvette. I literally just want to have that experience of owning a Corvette. Um, and so I decided to go with it. Now, this whole process of getting this car was a little bit difficult. It was a little easier than that process. And I'm going to say this. When I first thought about buying this C7 Corvette, not this one, another one, the guy was going to charge me $85,000. $85,000. And that was for a Grand Sport. And I said, well, I'm kind of looking at the Z06. And he said, well, we can do a Z06 for $95,000. I was like, ooh, that's getting a little pricey. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to get into the territory to where like, I can't afford this car. It's not, gonna, it's not gonna make any sense to buy a car that you can only afford to keep for about you know two months and then you can't no longer make the payment. So I went to my neighbor at the time and just talked to him about Corvette stuff. Guys, I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. I was literally talking to my neighbor in another development at the time when I first moved here about you know um, uh, the, the Corvette. He literally popped open his garage and had a Z06, 2015 Z06, I believe. He bought it when it first came out, Laguna Blue, um, just like, you know, Brink of Speed uh, Z06, and he had it in his garage. And I was like, wait a minute, you own a Z06? He was like, yeah, man. So we started talking about Corvettes, and he's like, go talk to Kerbeck. Kerbeck is a dealership that he had never dealt with before, but he was like, you know, call them and see what they can do for you. I get home, and I call Kerbeck. Literally, guys, within two minutes, me and Kerbeck had a deal together over the phone for this C7 Corvette here. I asked him, what Corvettes do you have available? And I told him, I was like, I'm looking for a Z06. He said, Clarence, I'm not going to say here and lie to you. We have no deals on a Z06 right now. But if you're looking for a Grand Sport, I can get you a good deal. So what kind of good deal? So that Z06s was still cheaper than $95,000. They was around eighty-five. dollars So I was going to pay eighty-five dollars almost for a Grand Sport here. But in Kerbeck, I was going to pay 85 for a Z06 there. And I was like, well, what is your price for the Grand Sport? He said $60,000. $60,000. You guys, when he said $60,000, I was literally sitting there like, all right, I'm talking about 650 horsepower or 460 horsepower. Hmm. $60,000 or $85,000. Hmm. My budget or go over my budget. Hmm. Let's go ahead and do that $60,000. And so that literally alone, that one quick phone call of talking to my neighbor, calling them, making that quick phone call, get me this Corvette till this day. Would I have been mad if I had bought a $85,000 Corvette Grand Sport knowing I could have bought this for 60? I would have been a mad guy that day. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. But, you know, the blessings and the opportunity and the people that I've met along the way, I was able to get this C7 Corvette Grand Sport for $60,000 out the door with taxes and all that stuff included. It wasn't just like, oh, $60,000 plus your taxes and your dealership fees. No, it was literally $60,000 even out the door, including taxes, tags, title, fees, and all that stuff. So if you ever go looking for a Corvette, 
and you want a dealership to go to, go to Kerbeck, tell them I sent you, say, hey, see going to Speed 252, the YouTube channel, or Clarence, go talk to Dave or Armani or, uh, or Samuel. And those guys can help you get into a, the C8 Corvette of your dreams. And they still got C7 Corvette, so don't get it twisted. They can still get you in the C7 right now from the ones that went a lot. And they can definitely get you in the C8 Corvette as well. But I did not take the museum delivery of this car because of that story right there. I didn't, one, know that the Corvette museum delivery was a thing. And two, <laughs> I mean, at this point, they already had this car on their lot. And it's funny, when he texted me, he was like, what kind of color scheme are you looking for? He sent me like a black on black uh, C7 Corvette. And I was like, ah, I don't know if the black on black thing is, is my thing. I'm the type of dude that like, you know, I like a little bit of chrome. You know, you guys, you know, you understand where I'm coming from. You guys love chrome. You love it. I know you do. Some of you guys love chrome, some of you guys love black. I'm gonna make sure both of you guys know, like I got black wheels on the car right now, but I'm a little bit of a chrome fan too. So I said, hey buddy, can you send me a blue um, car with chrome wheels? Because I actually, my favorite color is blue and I wanted some chrome. And he actually sent me that and that's what this is today. So this car, as you can see right now, you still got the blue right there and the chrome wheels are actually inside the house at the moment. I took them off to put on his aftermarket wheels. Now. Um, long story short, I currently have, as you guys can see, a C7 in my garage and a C8 in my garage, and I'm super blessed to do so. I can tell you in a later video how I afford both of these cars at the moment, you know, depending on the whole virus thing, that can change my whole life around. You never know, because right now a lot of people are losing jobs and, and all that stuff due to this virus, and that wasn't expected before I bought this car. You know, I had plans on buying this car two, two years ago, you guys. And, you know, now the virus and all that stuff came along and it makes, you know, a little bit things difficult for a lot of other people in the world. But I will um, teach you guys how I'm able to afford both of these cars currently at the same time. And it ain't one of these YouTuber videos that's going to be like, oh, man, I'm making tens of thousands of dollars off YouTube. And, you know, guys like, no, it's not. It's going to be real reasons, real story, real background, real history on how I'm actually able to tame both the C7 Corvette and the C8 Corvette and that whole journey that whole process because i want you guys to understand like i am a real person as, as you guys know so are the other youtubers but i'm gonna give you the real story i'm not gonna give you the whole fluff and powder puff and know oh, i hit the lottery and i make tens of thousands of dollars off youtube nah that's that's bogus not that's not how it works i have a youtube channel because i enjoy interacting with you all I enjoy, you know, meeting the friends I met along the way, and I enjoy the stories I get to tell you all. To hope these stories um, encourage you all, inspire you guys to become, you know, C8 Corvette manager owners as well, maybe C7 Corvette owners as well, or maybe just even YouTube bloggers or whatever you own a Honda Civic, a Prius, a Ford, a F150, a Silverado, a GMC Denali, whatever the case may be. Whatever vehicle you own and you want to start a YouTube channel with, do it. You know what I'm saying? Like I want this experience to resonate in all of you guys so you can be like that's a real dude he has a real story i stand behind him i'm going to support him and he's going to give me the real life story instead of all this bogus stuff about oh man i hit the lottery yeah my parents were rich yeah no none of that stuff that wasn't my story my friends tell me all the time you know from mike from don to other people i should write a book about my story so this book as long as this book, book touch one person that's all that really matters and I went through a whole journey of life and problems and issues and how I got here and how I got there, sleeping in the car, eating hotels, you know, cereal breakfast for free when I didn't have a place to live. That's a long story, you guys. I'm going to share that story with you guys along the way. But I wanted to make this video because a lot of you asked me, you know, what were my favorite reasons for doing a museum delivery? And I'm going to say you right now, the experience was one, two. I wanted to help out a museum delivery as far as my YouTube channel. Now, my YouTube channel isn't that big, and I want it to grow so big that I can help out so many people in the world. So, you know, for two, I want to help out a museum delivery because I think they deserve a little bit of attention. And some of these big YouTubers, you know, they just don't care about a museum delivery. They don't want to spend extra money on it. They want to be the first one to get it. And obviously, going the museum the route wasn't giving me the first opportunity to get this car, but I still have this car, which is a blessing and a great opportunity. Three, I enjoy the people that I met at the Corvette Museum. I mean, it was freaking phenomenal, you guys, from you know Chris, from um, Katie, from uh, Adam, and from Shane. The list goes on of people that I met at the National Corvette Museum. And um, that was, you know, the number, of re number three reason why I enjoyed my experience there. Um, I enjoyed watching them a little bit. I cringed a little bit. I watched them take the bumper off my car, take off my Z51 spoiler, which is currently right here, and add my high wing on as well. And it was such a great 
experience seeing them put the car back together and seeing that big wing get on the car. Because I'm not going to lie, you guys. I was a little nervous about that whole entire process. But, you know, that experience that was just number four and number five overall about the National Corvette Museum was actually sharing that experience with you guys. You know, it was it was nice to see you all text me or email me or leave a comment down and say, hey, we just saw you in a webcam. Guy, you look freaking phenomenal. Um, and your car looked kind of orange in the webcam, but it's really red and all that stuff. I'm glad that the webcam showed you guys an orange color because a lot of you still kept trying to figure out what color the car was. And they reached out and was like, is your car orange? I'm like, no, I don't think so. But it was because of the webcam because some of you guys sent me the email of the pictures that you took from the webcam and the car did look orange. But no, it's torch red. And so those are the reasons why, guys, I decided to take the museum delivery with this car and it didn't happen with this car. And, you know, I want to thank you guys for watching this video today, watching this upload. Once again, if you're going through some tough times right now, I hope you guys get through all that stuff. I'm looking forward to hoping that these YouTube events, this virus goes away so the YouTube events can come up and I can travel the world with these two cars here um, and be able to you know, show my love and meet you guys, have that great experience, have that connection and just be able to chat about real life stuff. And you know, I'm a, I'm a real human being. I went through a lot of stuff growing up and went through a lot of experiences that got me to this process today. And you know, once again, I want to thank each and every one of you for pushing that play button. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, I'm telling you right now, if you want a real life guy that's down to earth, who's really going to be here, you know, answering comments and emails and all that stuff. And if I haven't got to some of your emails, I promise you I'm going to get back to them. There's been a lot of them. Um, and, and I just want to thank you for supporting this channel and being, you know, part of my journey and being part of my success with YouTube thus far. And, um, you know, I, the, I can go on and on and on about how much you guys have been here for me. Thank you to Darren and Steven again for purchasing my merch, my website, my key tag. Um, if you do want to support this channel, my website and all that stuff will be down in the description below. It will also be in this video as well. And I want to thank you guys for just watching this video and supporting me, you know, and all the people that watch all the ads, watch the entire videos. You guys are, are wonderful and great. And the ones that, you know, push the play button and watch my videos and support me um, you know, halfway through. I still greatly appreciate each and every one of you as well. And once again, you know, this is Seagull on Speed 252. We got another episode coming your way. Hopefully, we're here within the next couple of days. So I hope you enjoyed it as well. Stay tuned for that episode because you guys are going to love it. And uh, Seagull on Speed 252 is out. Be safe, you guys.